Welcome to the second hour of this morning. Here are today's headlines. Minister of SMEs and Startups Kwon j i s u n g had his first roundtable since taking office with SME leaders yesterday. The minister said the focus of the controversial corporate punishment law that toughens punishment for work-related deaths will be on preventing wrongful deaths and accidents rather than punishing business owners. SME leaders also called for more government support to enhance workplace safety and promote R&D activities. The Democratic Party has urged a People Power Party candidate for Busan City Mayor Park Hyung-jun to come forward with facts about the Lee Myung-bak administration's illegal surveillance of politicians as the senior political affairs secretary to the disgraced former president. In a 2009 Presidential Senior Secretary Office document disclosed to the public by the National Intelligence Service, it was revealed that Lee Myung-bak's presidential office ordered the spy agency to update and report personal information of all National Assembly lawmakers. The ruling party urged Park Hyung-jun to tell the truth about the illegal surveillance and vowed to find out whether similar surveillance was conducted under the Park Geun-hye administration as well. Mitsubishi professor of Japanese legal studies John Mark Ramsier at Harvard Law School has not only alleged that the Korean victims of Japan's military sexual slavery were willing prostitutes, but also distorted facts about the Kanto massacre, where the Japanese military, police, and civilians mass-murdered Korean residents of Japan's Kanto region after the 1923 earthquake. He quoted Japanese tabloid reports from the time that even its own government acknowledged as fake news three years later to support his claim that the massacre was an act of self-defense by the Japanese against crimes committed by Koreans. This article is available online and will be published by Cambridge University in August. Finally, Hong Kong's Apple Daily reported yesterday, citing Radio Free Asia's resources, that the names of 150,000 senior citizens over the age of 80 disappeared from a pensions list in Hubei province during the first half of 2020. According to the coverage, local authorities did not clarify the reason behind the sudden disappearance and prohibited people from tallying the number of deaths and funerals during the period. There have been 4,636 COVID-19 deaths reported from China, but local experts say that there are at least five times more deaths and that the current aggregated number is too small to account for the 150,000 missing names. And you can listen to these headlines once again on our YouTube channel by searching TBS EFM. Once there, you'll get a script of the headlines and subtitles as well. Coming up next, our weekly discussion segment, News Seminar.